A pet peeve of mine is people who idolize, canonize, worship, or obsess on documents from the 1600s to the 1800s and declare that the concepts people came up with and verbalized in that period are the quintessential values that everyone should uphold and practically worship, and that they're what this country was actually built on, regardless of whether those were the actual values of the people at the time and not just virtue signaling. Virtue signaling is not some new thing. Those things were part of what people back then expressed what this country should be built on, but often what people say and what they really are can be quite different from each other. Some of the people with the most interesting and thoughtful perspectives that you would think would result in a peaceful person don't end up reflecting how those people treat others. In Texas, when someone says, well, bless your heart, that's clearly not a good thing. It's essentially saying, well, aren't you a little piece of shit? When we walk around in a professional setting, and often even outside those settings, when we come into someone's view, we're supposed to feel like we have to smile, otherwise we would be considered to be intimidating. When people ask us how we're doing, it's often lying and just saying things are good because we know the other person doesn't really want to hear about anything bad that we're actually going through. It's basically the same thing as an extended way of saying hello. It's telling someone to say something positive or don't say anything at all. Granted, this could have a slightly positive effect on someone if they actually differ from their normal routine to try to think of something positive. So it's not something I'm going to necessarily chastise but I will point out for the sake of this video. Generally, people really are trying to be positive, and we have all these fripperies that we push forth to try to keep us positive. But there is very little out there anymore in media, movies, games, really in any of our entertainment that pushes forth any sort of idealism or showing the ways that people would react in a society where treating each other decently is important. That's completely gone and has been replaced with basically a message of survival of the fittest and please consider buying the products that are advertised during this slot that you happen to be watching. Or if it's a movie, the products that have been purposely and specifically placed throughout the movie. So the corporations are like, we hope we have a lock on the demographics who watch this material. We want more products in a certain genre to get more advertising so it gets more sales. So this rerun program needs to be cancelled or thrown into a different slot, and this other rerun that attracts the target demographic of the products we want more sales in, replace it so we can see a little uptick in the sales of those products. After all, we're just one of three companies that make this kind of product, at least the kind you find at most stores, and are the only ones who have the legal ability to make this product this way. The advertisers have a huge control over media. They indirectly control what slots are able to be in place and when. Again, they don't control it directly. They give demands as to what product genres need to be increased or decreased in advertising coverage, and then the television stations will add or drop programs as a result, especially when it comes to reruns. And since all of media is controlled by six or fewer companies, at least you know, television media anyway, Channels themselves are usually created out of a need for a demographic to cover the sales of certain types of products. Some shows are cash cows for what gets advertised for a pretty large set of demographics of an audience, and those shows are obviously gold mines for advertisers like the police-oriented shows. Shows that present a mindset that's very different than what we're currently living gives advertisers no chance of being accurate in guessing what the demographics are going to be. They are simply not going to be something advertisers believe they would be making a sound investment in, and therefore those shows don't get made. A show like Star Trek The Next Generation would never be released now because it would be something new or current that takes us away from the status quo. If it's old, it's nostalgia, and nostalgia sells products, so if it's old, it's still okay. People can pine for older days all they want, and it doesn't hurt the status quo, nor a company's ability to convince people to think about their products. Everything in media is about continuing the status quo. It's about keeping us in that wartime mindset. Let's always be prepared for war. Top Gun in 1986 was essentially like a propaganda piece to get us amped up for the United States to bully another country and to try to get more people to join the military. We can even look at Looney Tunes during World War II from our current perspective and go, damn, that was some serious propaganda. But we actually continue to do that same sort of thing today, but it's gotten a lot more refined and people don't even notice anymore, just like they didn't notice back in the 40s. 
So yes, let's continue to be the world's bully, and let's back it with a pro-bullying mindset in our society, especially online. Yes, we can all become bullies in the process, and as long as things don't completely fall apart, it's all good. We'll attempt to cross that bridge that's falling apart when we get there. And important things like climate change and the effects of fracking? Shut up, you regressive liberal hippie SJW pussy. We can't put any restrictions on businesses no matter what they're doing, or that would be communism, you pinko commie SJW pussy hippie freeloader. So back to these 1600s to 1800s documental philosophy worshippers. So when you bring up all the negative things that slip right by those stated virtue signal values from those periods, negative things like child labor, slavery, a lack of women's rights, safety in the workplace, and so many other things, when you bring them up to these people, they'll say, well, well, they were a product of their time. But they completely neglect the fact that those things should never have been allowed in the first place if this country was really built on these concepts that these people in question virtue signal about as if those actually are and were the values of this country. Actions speak louder than words, but words are great when virtue signaling is the goal. How about trying to update those concepts to current times so they'll make sense to other people if those concepts and philosophies are really truly worthwhile? No, you'd rather tell people that they need to learn their history and claim that what people said their values were back then were actually their values, and their actual actions don't make a hill of beans difference because USA, USA, Jerry, Jerry. And please don't respond to my merely mentioning slavery with a long rant about the history of why we had slavery, because it's not important to what I'm talking about here. We didn't seriously try to put a stop to slavery until way later, and then we never completely eliminated some of the mindsets responsible for keeping black people as slaves to begin with. Laws changed, and many attitudes changed to a large degree, but hardly any of the attitudes changed completely. Why is it that the people who tend to be the nastiest in the way they talk with other people, particularly online, tend to obsess on these supposed principles, ideas, and philosophies that were established in written form between the 1600s and the 1800s? If those values are so great, then why are so many of the people who claim to profess those values so shitty to people? Could it be because they're just virtue signaling? Yes, yes, I think so. And I'm not trying to say that everyone who promotes those values is shitty to other people, but it's sure common, especially on platforms like this. It is these same historical periods in which mindsets had been established as to what a woman's place supposedly is, and maybe it was her place in relation to how people had to survive by that point in history. But part of that mindset has never fully went away, even after reality no longer blatantly requires it anymore because of technology and medical breakthroughs but leftovers of past mindsets and traditions die hard. That same historical period when the mindset that black people should always be put in their place, a mindset that, as I said, has never completely left the culture of the United States. It certainly left the laws of the United States, but it never completely left the culture. Bits of it are still there, and those bits are quite powerful and oppressive. You don't have to look very far to see it in full force on the comment sections of YouTube videos that heavily deal with race issues. Oh, but let me guess, they're just trolling. They don't really feel that way. Uh, sure. We're talking about that same period of history where people typically believed that society should behave and believe a very particular way and it was crammed down people's throats where only some men were created equal and women were not considered equal at all. And it wasn't necessarily based on religious views, although often it was. But this is why some of the misogynists and racists out there who brag about atheism making them more rational and logical, who romanticize the mindsets established in the 1600s to the 1800s, feel so empowered by documents from those periods. This country was founded via horrible methods. The people who were establishing this country were committing genocide onto the natives. Normally I'd just say, we were committing genocide, but some people get triggered with semantics and are afraid that people are going to claim that they themselves committed those acts, or that their great-grandparents committed those acts themselves, which is an extremely overreactional response, but you know, in order to keep people from being triggered, I'll just say, the people who were establishing this country. Oh wait, you'll try to chastise me on using the word establishing next, right? Because I said, the people who were establishing this country.
You know exactly what I'm saying, but you know, I've said something negative about the way this country was started and how messed up some of the actual principles people had back then when they did what they did, so you must come in to defend it because, let me guess, is it the Republican argument that the Native Americans were savages and deserved to be wiped out because they didn't like being taken over and shoved off land they had lived on for generations? Oh wait, I guess it was somehow okay back then for people to think that the natives weren't really human enough because they weren't part of the tribe of the people who were establishing and colonizing this country. But let me guess again, now you'll say, now, now wait a minute, yes, the way this country was founded was unacceptable, but, but that's in the past. Okay, but why are you still worshipping the 1600s to the 1800s documents in attempt to virtue signal? Is there a reason? When were those values actually shoved forth in those periods of history? So yeah, is there a reason for basically worshipping those periods? Is it because liberty and freedom? Because unregulated capitalism? Because snake oil salespeople are cool because they found an inventive way to make money off the stupidity of the public? Because you desperately want to believe that this country shits rainbows or that it used to shit rainbows? Because you think this country was once great? When was it great? The 1950s with McCarthyism and religion being crammed down people's throats and a hell of a lot more blatant racism than we have now? Or are you talking about earlier? Was it great when we had child labor and slavery? Was it great when women hardly had any rights? When was it great? I think we were becoming more enlightened from around 1967 to 1978. And unfortunately, that rise in enlightenment almost completely died out by 1983 to be replaced with full-on consumerism and more leftovers of colonialism. But that doesn't mean I thought this country was great from 1967 to 1978, it's just that we were really onto some great social potential and it especially showed in the entertainment we created. There was certainly a lot more positive idealism, even if some of it was unrealistic. Entertainment of all forms from that period were very often quite intelligent, creative, thoughtful, and was trying to get people to be more tolerant. It essentially believed in the concept of the Age of Aquarius, whether you believe in astrology or not. Are we better than a lot of countries? Sure, depending on what you're judging a country on. For the values most of us make claims that we hold dear, we're certainly better than the Middle East. For values of peace, tolerance, understanding, empathy, and compromise when necessary, especially when these things relate to how we treat the rest of the world, we're fucking horrible. When it comes to trying to create an environment in our own country where the largest percentage of people have a great potential to be happy, we're fucking horrible. But I guess we're not supposed to do that. We're not supposed to try to create an environment where the largest percentage of people have a great potential to be happy because the worship of the traditions from the 1600s to the 1800s is too strong and speaking against those traditions means you want to take away our guns and our games and our cars and everything enjoyable in life or something like that. We have been in an almost constant state of war since this country was founded. Such great values. America. A war country we're supposed to be proud of because power and money conquer all. Yeah, absolute power and money corrupt absolutely. Look, the United States is the world's bully. Unless we as a society find a way to get out of the pro-war, pro-colonialism, pro-bully, pro-agitation, pro-sensationalism, pro-consumerism, pro-survival of the fittest, and promoting the mindset that those with the most weapons and the most financial influence wins, we're going to continue to be the world's bully in multiple ways. We are not the good guys because there's no such thing as the good guys, and if there was, we still wouldn't be it. And there is no black and white to begin with, so, you know, there's no such thing as the good guys. So again, this country was never really truly great, but I hope that we can work towards actually making it great, and I think this country has awesome potential. A lot more potential than a lot of other countries. And some of that is because of some of the principles that our country is supposed to be founded on, but we don't ever seem to push forth. Usually it's about virtue signaling. But we don't make this country great by continuing the status quo, we don't do this by being so neophobic that when someone who looks like a hippie or dares to have purple hair simply says something as innocuous as, Hey, look at that beautiful flower on the ground in front of you. 
and it makes you go on a rant about freeloaders who don't pay for flowers and that those freeloaders don't care about freedom because they don't make very much money. America, land of the free checking and home of the Braves Club catalog. To go. And it accepts Visa and MasterCard. So get out your wallet and put on your product thinking cap. We're about to have a commercial break after leaving you with something that is unresolved until after the break. Toodles!